Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our AAPC CIC curriculum. And we are going to dive into ICD-10 Chapter 12, and that is ICD-10-CM, and that's diseases of the skin and subcutaneous tissue. So our key lesson concepts for this lesson are going to be to understand the classification and chapter-specific coding guidelines for diseases of the skin and subcu tissue, identify the different categories of the diseases of the skin and subcu tissue and their coding requirements, and then also gain proficiency in assigning accurate ICD-10-CM codes for diseases of the skin and subcutaneous tissue that are common in the inpatient setting. First, let's jump into some chapter-specific coding guidelines for skin and subcutaneous tissue. Before we look at the specific chapter coding guidelines, we have to understand some information about ulcers. And here we have a picture of pressure ulcers. And here we can see that there are common areas where pressure ulcers develop. It's on the back of the head, the shoulders, the elbows, the low back and buttocks, the hips, the inner knees, and the heels. And this is because these are significant pressure points in our body when we are bedridden, thus the name pressure ulcers. And then you can see here on the right, the different stages of pressure ulcers and the classification accounts for the site and the stage of the pressure ulcer. And now conversely, a non-pressure ulcer is a skin ulcer caused by a primary mechanism other than pressure or shear, such as a poor circulation. Poor circulation can be caused by venous or arterial insufficiency, excessive moisture or trauma. Non-pressure ulcers are common in patients with arterial disease, venous disease, neuropathy, and diabetes. So let's start and take a look at our coding guidelines surrounding ulcers. First, we have pressure ulcer stage codes. Codes in category L89 pressure ulcer identify the site and stage of the pressure ulcer. ICD-10-CM classifies pressure ulcer stages based on severity, which is designated by stage one to four, deep tissue pressure injury, unspecified stage, and unstageable. Assign as many codes from category L89 as needed to identify all the pressure ulcers the patient has, if applicable. So for unstageable pressure ulcers, assignment of the code for an unstageable pressure ulcer should be based on the clinical documentation. These codes are used for pressure ulcers whose stage cannot be clinically determined. This code should not be confused with codes for unspecified stage. When there is no documentation regarding the stage of the pressure ulcer, assign the appropriate code for unspecified stage. If during an encounter, the stage of an unstageable pressure ulcer is revealed after debridement, assign only the code for the stage revealed following debridement. Again, we're seeing this difference between an unstageable and then also an unspecified stage. Unstageable is when, again, we are unable to clinically determine the stage because the ulcer is either covered up by eschar or has been treated with a skin or muscle graft, and we don't know what's underlying or underneath of it. Unspecified is just where the provider hasn't documented the stage or the nurse. So here we have documented pressure ulcer stage. Assign the pressure ulcer stage code should be guided by clinical documentation of the stage or documentation of the terms found in the alphabetic index, and we'll see that when we look at a couple examples. For clinical terms describing the stage that are not found in the alphabetic index and there's no documentation of the stage, the provider should be queried. Patients admitted with pressure ulcers documented as healed. If the patient has a healed pressure ulcer and they're coming in for an admission and it's documented as such, no code is assigned if the documentation states that the pressure ulcer is completely healed at the time of admission. Pressure ulcers documented as healing. So if the documentation supports the pressure ulcer is healing, this should be assigned to the appropriate pressure ulcer stage code based on the documentation in the medical record. If the documentation does not provide information about the stage of the healing pressure ulcer, assign the appropriate code for an unspecified stage. For ulcers that were present on admission but healed at the time of discharge, assign the code for the site and stage of the pressure ulcer at the time of the admission. For a patient admitted with a pressure ulcer evolving into another stage during the admission. So if a patient is admitted to an inpatient hospital with a pressure ulcer at one stage and it progresses to a higher stage, two separate codes should be assigned. One code for the site and stage of the ulcer on admission and a second code for the same ulcer site at the highest stage reported during the stay. Pressure-induced deep tissue damage. For pressure-induced deep tissue damage or deep tissue pressure injury, assign only the appropriate code for pressure-induced tissue damage. So there are some guidelines surrounding non-pressure chronic ulcers, which are very similar to the pressure ulcer coding guidelines. Please read over them. We're not going to give them into detail because they're exactly aligning with the pressure ulcers. So we are going to take a look again at our general coding guidelines 
where we see documentation by clinicians other than the patient's provider. Now, we looked at this guideline a couple lessons back, but here it is going to come to life. So this is a, a situation where we can take documentation from a nurse regarding the stage of the pressure ulcer or the depth of a non-pressure chronic ulcer. Now, what this guideline is saying is that the patient's provider, which would be the physician or other qualified healthcare practitioner, such as a nurse practitioner, a resident, a physician's assistant, who's legally accountable for establishing the patient's diagnosis, first has to document the diagnosis. And that would either be a pressure ulcer or a non-pressure ulcer, a chronic ulcer, a diabetic ulcer. So that diagnosis has to come first by the provider. Now, where we can pick up some documentation and coding specificity is from the nurse documentation where they document a pressure ulcer stage or the depth of the non-pressure chronic ulcer. Most of the time, this documentation will come from a nurse or a wound care specialist, but if we get this documentation, it has to be from someone who is a healthcare professional who's permitted to document in a patient's official medical record. Again, we have a little bit of difference of provider has, you know, as nurses, we are not allowed to diagnose a patient. However, from a coding perspective, we can take a wound care nurse's expertise and apply the stage or the depth of the pressure ulcer to get our coding specificity. So let's look at an example. Assign the diagnosis codes for the following conditions. Atherosclerosis of the left ankle, which is our native artery, with non-healing ulcer with breakdown of the skin. The breakdown of the skin was documented only by the nurse. So we're gonna start with atherosclerosis because the provider has documented atherosclerosis and that's the diagnosis. And here we can see some subterms that really don't take us to where we wanna go. So we wanna use this C also note arteriosclerosis. And we get to arteriosclerosis and then we have of arteries, of extremities, because that is where we have the documentation. It's the left ankle, so it's our arteries of extremities. And this says C, arteriosclerosis extremities, so we're going to scroll down there. And then under extremities, we have the leg. And then we have this width convention. And here I'm just showing you the different subterms, because we have to be very careful. This is very busy, and we don't want to end up under the wrong subterm to get to the specificity that we need for this condition. So we're not going to we're not going to stop it with we're not going to stop it bilateral because we know it's unilateral it's on the left ankle, and so here we get down to the left, and then under the width convention, we have an ulceration. So we have an ulceration, and that is I seventy point two four nine. But we can't stop there because here comes our specificity of the location on the left extra left leg extremity, which is ankle, and that's I seventy point two four three. So if we go to the tabular, we go first to our category, which is I-70, and that's the diseases of arteries, arterioles, and capillaries. And we see some use additional code notes here, if applicable. And then we're gonna to get to our subcategory, which is I-70.2, which is atherosclerosis of native arteries of the extremities. And we have a use an additional code note that doesn't apply in our situation, but it's always good to note them. And then here we are at, again, another subcategory of I-70.24, and then our final code that we got at the alphabetic index, and we just wanna make sure that we have the correct codes, and that's atherosclerosis of native artery, and that is what our documentation states, of left leg with ulceration of ankle. Now, right here, we have a use additional code to identify the severity of the ulcer, L97. Dot dash. So let's go there on the next slides and look up the severity of our ulcer. So we're going to go to our main term of ulcer, and it's of the lower limb, and it's of the ankle, and it's left, and then we're going to scroll down with. Now here we have the severity or the depth of this ulcer, right? And remember, this documentation here can come from a nurse. And in our situation, the nurse has documented that it's skin breakdown only. So that's the deepest layer, and that's L97.321. So our ulcer documentation came from the patient's provider, which is a physician, again, nurse practitioner, physician assistant, et cetera, um, and location. And then we have the skin breakdown coming from the nurse. So here we have L97, which is our category. And again, we have a non-healing ulcer of skin is an an inclusion term, and that's exactly what we have. We have this non-healing ulcer. And then we have this code first note, any associated underlying conditions such as 
atherosclerosis, and this marries our use additional code note at our atherosclerosis, which is nice. So then we have our code, which came from the alphabetic index, and we're confirming that it's L97.321, and that's a non-pressure chronic ulcer of the left ankle limited to breakdown of skin. And we can see here, so our documentation doesn't actually say that it's a chronic ulcer. And if you're like me, you start to question whether you're in the right place or not, because the documentation actually doesn't say it's a chronic ulcer, but our final code assignment says that it is. But when we go back to our L97 category, we can see here that that is included. And then if we go over to our lower limb ulcer, we can see some non-essential modifiers in our alphabetic index that we know that non-essential modifiers, if they're present in the documentation or absent, it doesn't dictate code assignment. So here we see chronic, we have our title of our category. So, and underneath the includes note, we can see this includes a chronic ulcer of skin of lower limb, not otherwise specified, or non-healing ulcer of the skin. So we don't have to worry that our diagnostic statement doesn't actually say chronic because our alphabetic index and classification have accommodated that nicely. So our final answer is going to be I70.243 for atherosclerosis of native arteries of the left leg with ulceration of ankle. And then we are going to use additional code, which is a sequencing rule. And our L97.321 is going to be our secondary code, non-pressure chronic ulcer of the left ankle limited to breakdown of skin. Moving on to another example. So in this example, we have a patient who has a pressure ulcer of the right hip and a pressure ulcer of the sacrum documented by the physician. Again, very important, our diagnoses are actually documented by the physician. The nursing assessment indicates a stage two pressure ulcer of the sacrum, adding that specificity with a stage three decubitus ulcer of the right hip. Now, decubitus and pressure are syn synonyms within ICD-10, so don't let that throw you. So here we have ulcer and then we have pressure. And that is again, the documentation by the patient's provider that this is a pressure ulcer. And then here we have the stage and this is stage two. And that is going to be for our sacral region pressure ulcer. And then we scroll down and we have sacral region and that takes us to L89.15. And then for our stage three of the right hip, we have hip and that's L89.2. So let's go to our category level and we have L89 pressure ulcer. And this includes bed sores, decubitus ulcers, plaster ulcer, pressure area, pressure sore. Those are some inclusion terms there. And then we have a code first, any associated gangrene. So that's just important to know. We don't have gangrene in our documentation, but just again, this is where a lot of times we can get our code first or use additional code notes. We do see here, there's a C official guidelines, pressure ulcer stage codes, and it's directing you to IC 12A, and this is documentation by clinicians other than the patient's provider, and that's exactly the guideline we just went over. It's reminding you what can be picked up by documentation by clinicians other than the provider. And then we have our first code, which is going to be L89.152, which is a pressure ulcer of the sacral region stage two. And then we're going to have our second code, which is L89.213, pressure ulcer of the right hip, stage three. So our final answer is going to be L89.213, pressure ulcer of the right hip, stage three, and then pressure ulcer of the sacral region, stage two, L89.15. So moving on to a patient with cellulitis. The patient was seen for IV antibiotic treatment of cellulitis of the left anterior neck. Here we have our main term of cellulitis and our location of neck and the alphabetic index directs us to L03.221. And here we can see in the tabular, we have L03.221 cellulitis of neck. I didn't pull anything from the category level because I don't see anything there of interest, but we always want to check our category level. So our final di diagnosis code is going to be L03.221 cellulitis of neck. So here we have an elderly patient was seen for treatment of cellulitis in the left lower extremity. The culture grew streptococcus B, and this was documented by the physician as the cause of the cellulitis. So here we have cellulitis, and then we have a lower limb, and that's L03.11. And then we have a code for a streptococcus, and it's group B, and that's as disease is classified elsewhere. So that's B95.1. So in our tabular, we see cellulitis and acute lymphangitis of other parts of limb, and our code directed by the alphabetic index was L03.11, and our six is going to give us the specificity of the left lower limb. And then here we are taken to B95.1, which is our strep 
group B as the cause of disease classified elsewhere. We have this coding tip here, code first, the type of infection from elsewhere in the book, and that's our cellulitis. And we're also reminded in the notes that this category is provided for use as a supplementary or additional code to identify infectious agents in diseases classified elsewhere. And it's going to be our secondary code. Again, these are secondary codes that further describe the type of infection of the cellulitis in this situation. So our final code assignment is going to be L03.116, cellulitis of the lower limb, and B95.1, streptococcus group B, as the cause of disease classified elsewhere. All right, guys, that's going to be it for the skin and subcutaneous tissue. Please take your quiz and let me know if you have any questions and we can review these in class together.